We are back here at Auto 060 Christina Radio Network. I'm Javier Mota, and we're talking with Dr. Tracy Willen. Uh, she's a, an expert uh, in uh, employment, and she has a, her new book, Employed for Life. And uh, so, Dr. Willen, thank you very much again for spending uh, these first uh, few days of, of your 2014 year uh, with us and uh, talking about your book and all the trends. So, uh, thank you very much for, for, for that. Oh, thank you, Javier, for having me on your show. I appreciate it. Yeah, and uh, so besides the book that, uh, again, is on sale already at uh, all bookstores and Amazon.com, uh, you also do a lot of conference and presentations for uh, actually car manufacturers, right? Absolutely. I have, um, this past year, been to 26 cities across the United States working with corporations and employees on career development and also women's leadership. In fact, some of the auto manufacturers we visited have been uh, Toyota and also in Detroit. We've been in Chicago, we've been in Minneapolis, and a lot of the sectors that deal with the auto industry. Really um, talking about two things. One is moving women into leadership opportunities, and then number two is career development plans for people in the auto industry and, and other industries as well. Thank you. No, thank you. But, and, and that's really important because as we were saying uh, before, I mean, uh, car manufacturer, manufacturers are always looking for people. I mean, it probably wasn't the case when uh, when, when the, the finance, uh, they, their finances weren't doing that well five, six years ago. I mean, like GM and uh, Chrysler went to bankruptcy and all that, but now they're back and they're like actually hiring a lot of people. Ford just announced they're gonna ha hire about like 3,500 3, people next year. So people should start looking to that. And But you also help the car manufacturers then to identify where people are, how to, to reach them? What I do is really help two things. One is help individuals take, take control of their career planning. Um, you know, you bring up a good point about auto manufacturers are hiring, but they're also looking for smart people. Um, you know, the mediocre employee is, is somewhat passe. And the second thing I do is really work with companies and employees on leadership, leadership for women, different generations. You know, there's three generations now in the workforce, which is very different in the past. And how do we embrace our younger generation and our women to make sure that they're progressing in, in, our, in our firms, because that's good for business. Yeah, uh, I mean that. Did, did you you mentioned something that that it sounds very interesting. Three generations in the workforce. Can you uh, elaborate a little bit on that? Because I think it's pretty interesting. Uh, I mean, young students and and young graduates uh, are obviously the the force that are going to drive the industry for for a long time. But there's also a lot of people with a lot of skills, like middle age, but then like people who's been there for for a long time. I mean, they know they have the overall picture. So, can you elaborate a little bit on that and how people can take advantage of that and don't be afraid if you are like maybe 40, 50, whatever? I mean, you can still be pretty valuable, right, to car manufacturers? Oh, absolutely. We have the baby boomers, which is about today, age 52 and up. You have Generation X, which is about 32 to age 52. You have Generation Y, which is late 20s and 30s. And actually, in some industries, like the food service, I said there's even Generation Z, which is, you know, the very young generations who work part-time on, on work permits. So if you think about it, they all have different education backgrounds. They have different technology backgrounds. They have different experiences. I encourage the people who are in the baby boomer generation who have the most experience and knowledge but they're probably, or they might not have all the technology skills of the younger generation, to sort of build those up so that you are very valuable. And for the younger generation, do a lot of jobs and skill building so that you can be as valuable as a baby boomer and augment those technical skills that you have. Yeah, uh, it's, it's, it's a pretty tough uh, work environment, right? I mean, uh, I mean, fortunately, the whole uh, economics here in the United States, are, it's, uh, it's improving a lot. And uh, still, uh, unemployment is kind of high, but uh, I mean, there's a lot of opportunities uh, in in every field, not only the automotive industry. If you like uh, focus on, on on your skills and like try to find a, a new way of, of of using them, right? Absolutely. Um, you know, not only do we have four generations in the workforce, but we're also just very diverse workforce, much more than in in the past. Not only just through cultural diversity, but as I mentioned, education and technology diversity. I think the best thing that people can do is make a plan. You have to plan much more today about your career than in the past, because you're having a new job. Let's face it; the government says every four to five years. 
So if you're going to work for a long time, you need to make a plan about how you're going to, do, you know, really monitor your career and drive yourself to success. Yeah, very interesting. I mean, uh, it's it's been almost an hour now that we've been talking to you about all these uh, the things related, not only to cars but in in in, in general uh, through society. And one one last topic that uh, we haven't touched it related directly to cars and mobile devices. I mean, this is some area that has completely changed. I will say in the past what five years, uh, maybe since the iPhone came out uh, and and. And when you think about that, I mean, like a car cycle, I mean, where, when a car manufacturer designs a car, the life cycle of that car is seven years. So there's been a huge revolution in, in, in this field, mobile devices in the car, just in the past five or six years, right, since the iPhone came out. What are we going to see in the next five to ten years? What, what's your prediction into that? Well, you know, looking, I love to go to the Consumer Electronics Show, and as you know, there's always so many new car things there. So I took a peek to see what, what would be happening this year. Um, and number one, I think it's very interesting, is that the automotive uh, wants to get more creative. They want to see how the creative community can add more features to the car. So it might be in the music systems, or it might be in the touch systems, right, the touch screens. I think we're going to see a lot more in safety. Um, because, you know, let's, let's face it, we protect people after an accident, and now people are saying, let's avoid that accident, and how can backup cameras and crash avoidance systems in the cloud help us there? And I think we're going to see many more apps. There's apps everywhere for gas apps, um, you know, buying apps, uh, you know, driving apps, repair apps. So I think we're continually going to see a lot more apps. Yeah, and uh, apps and also, as you were mentioning, like all these uh, new trends into cars that are almost self-driven. I mean, I, I know if you have had the opportunity to be in one of those, but for example, the Mercedes-Benz S-Class, the new one, the 2014 model, I mean, basically it's like halfway there. I mean, the car has amazing technology that almost uh, drives itself. I think Google and Toyota had something in Nevada program that they already have a car that uh, it's self-driven. So that's another trend that it's going to be we're going to be seeing in the next few years, right? Absolutely. In fact, out by me in Northern California, we see the autonomous or robotic cars that Google and Toyota have done going up and down the freeways. And in fact, they already have permits, I understand, in Las Vegas for robotic taxis and also applied in San Francisco. And the taxi driver was very concerned about losing his job because he thought he would have a job for life as a taxi driver, and now a robot might take that away. So, so autonomous cars is a big theme that I think we'll also see at the CES show. Yeah, what, what a fascinating world we live in. Not, uh, I mean, like self-driven cars and all that. But maybe there's another job opportunity there because I think there's going to be, at some point, I mean, and this is kind of, of joking, but also seriously, at some point we're going to see like lawyers, like, I mean, if you get drunk, let's say in Vegas, and you get into a self-driven car, and the car for some reason has an accident, who is responsible at that? So I think law, as always, finds a way to get into the new trends of anything, right? Oh, that's right. For every new industry, you're going to always have adjacent industries and other types of jobs being created from the new industry. If you think about it, because Apple Computers out by me, how many jobs in the tech sector have been created because of Apple's creativeness? And, and we have a metric out here that, like, for every new tech firm, there's seven additional jobs that are created because of that tech firm, which is pretty exciting, and every industry has that. Well, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Tracy Woolen, for your time and again spending our first show of 2014 with us. Uh, Dr. Tracy Woolen, you can follow her on Twitter, and Facebook, and Pinterest, LinkedIn, everywhere. So thank you very much again for your time, and I uh, hope to talk to you soon again. Thank you, Javier. Happy New Year. Thank you very much. Bueno, esto ha sido Auto 060, una edición especial para comenzar el 2014 y nos vemos en la próxima edición de Auto 060. Yo soy Javier Mota, esto es Cristina Radio Network. Este programa fue una producción de National Latino Broadcasting.